It is vital to determine the precise amount of light energy, or exposure, needed to cure a 3D printable resin. Why? Let's say we have a model with small positive features. These square posts range from 500 to 100 microns in width, and they're 4 millimeters tall. Now we print it on an ember with the proper energy exposure. All of the features turned out except for the very smallest one, the 100 micron wide post. It started to print but collapsed because it was too thin. When we print this model with only two-thirds of the energy, neither the 150 or 100 micron posts are formed. With half the light energy as the original print, only the 500 and 450 micron posts form, but they're thinner than they should be. For models with small negative features, too much light energy can be a problem. If we dial in the exposure, the 500 micron and larger gaps are clearly resolved. The 250 micron gaps are partially resolved, but the 125 micron features are completely filled in. If we add just 33% more light exposure, the 250 micron features are completely filled in and we have effectively lowered our resolution. So how easy is it to find the correct exposure? These prints each take roughly 30 minutes to print at 25 micron layers. So if we vary the light energy by varying the exposure time, we might need to try about 10 different exposures before we can dial it in. And that's just for the 25 micron layers. What if we want to print at 10, 50, or 100 micron layers? So in total, it could take upwards of 20 hours worth of printing to find the right exposure times for our resin. But if we're clever, we can get the same information from a single print. We start with a diagnostic print file consisting of 32 slices. The slice images create a panel of 32 rectangles where each rectangle receives a distinct amount of light energy. The rectangle that is illuminated in every slice receives 32 times the energy as a rectangle that is only illuminated in the first slice. The pattern is randomized to minimize the effect of possible unequal illumination across the build area. Unlike a normal print, we don't fill up the tray with resin. Simply pipette a layer of resin directly onto the PDMS window. Also, the tray does not rotate between layers, and we do not use a build head. Then, we run the print file, which only takes a little over a minute. After the print is complete, we wash off the uncured resin and are left with a thin film with distinct panels. The darker panels receive more light and are thicker, ones that receive less light are thinner, and some panels never reached a threshold amount of energy and did not solidify at all. Next, we use a thickness gauge to carefully measure the thickness of each panel then record the measurements onto a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet creates a plot of thickness versus light dosage. We use a logarithmic fit to extrapolate into the layer thicknesses we're interested in, namely 10 to 100 microns. Then we locate the layer thickness we want to print at and find the dosage required to cure. For the Ember printer, the irradiance is about 20 milliwatts per centimeter squared. This gives us an exposure time of 1.25 seconds. But we're not quite there yet. Ideally, a 3D printed layer would solidify all at once when exposed to light. However, in practice, it is more complicated. We wish the light intensity was perfectly uniform throughout the thickness of the layer. In reality, the light intensity drops off as we move up through the resin. So the layer begins to form where the light intensity is highest, at the surface of the window. And over time, it grows towards the previous layer. So the exposure time we calculated is only the minimum time it takes to cure a film. In practice, for the layer to fully adhere to the previous layer, the exposure time is usually between 20 and 40% more time than is specified on the graph. You can figure this out with a handful of test prints. Printing the panels, measuring their thickness, and calculating an exposure time takes about 30 minutes on Ember. This process works well for a wide range of 3D printable resins. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you'd like to learn more about research in 3D printing.